This is my advanced longhouse build and in this video I'm going to show you how to build it. But before I do, let me give you a quick tour so you know what to expect. Starting at the front of the structure, this is what it looks like. As you can see, we're making use of black marble walls and thatched roofs. We have several windows on the roof just to let some natural light into the structure. And if we move through the hexagonal gate here into the main room of the build, you can see we have this crafting room with a room on the left hand side of the build and the right hand side of the build. So going clockwise around this room, we have the golder table, a fermenter and stone oven, a hearth with a max level cauldron, another stone oven and fermenter, and a black forge. In the centre we have the long heavy table with a throne on either side for decoration and of course if you wanted to you could fill this out with some useful items to grab on the way out or just some decorative pieces like food items. On the left hand side of the structure we have this floating hearth creating an arch into the maximum comfort room. As you can see we have everything in here we need that includes the hearth, the armour stand, a round table, a rug and a throne, a banner, the dragon bed and the hot tub. We also have the seasonal items in the corner here, so that's the yule tree and the maple. And if we move through into this garden area, I've cordoned off a small area, mainly just for decoration, but it can also double up as a small farm if needed. Moving back through the structure and into the right hand side of the build, again we have another floating hearth creating an arch into this room, which would be your main store. Now I only have one row of black metal chests here, but of course you can create three or four rows here to create the storage capacity that you require. We've got the cart here. Maximum level forge, maximum level workbench, and a dock or wharf at the back of the structure. Here you can park up your longship, and you can also get an idea of what the structure looks like from the back, though it does look similar to the front of the structure. So now that you know what to expect, let's get into the build part of the video. If you are enjoying this video as we move through, please do leave it a like, as it really encourages me to keep making videos like this. The first thing you need to do is build your foundation. So grab your stone floors, lay out a rectangle which is 20 long and 6 deep, until you end up with something like this. From here, you can add on two stone floors at the front of the structure in the middle, and also at the back of the structure in the middle. Then I'm going to grab our black marble floor, and... Follow this all the way around the structure until you end up with this. We can now finish off the foundation by adding on another 2x2 of stone floors at the front, placing a black marble stair at either side, and then with the black marble 2x1, follow this along on either side of the stone floor. We'll then place a 1x1 at the end, and a black marble plinth on the end of that. At the back of the structure, we will place two more stone floors, and then around the outside with the black marble floor until you have this shape here. And then at the back right hand side of the structure we'll miss the first two black marble floors and delete the third, fourth and fifth. Make sure to collect your black marble and then we'll place in three stone floors in their place. Now for the dock we'll grab the log beam 4 meters and make sure it locks onto the bottom of the stone floor here and then depending on how deep your water is either grab the log pole 2 meters and lock it in like this or the log pole 4 meters if your water is deeper than mine. Do the exact same on the other side and then grab your stone wall 2x1 and you should be able to create snap points here for you to build the foundations of the dock. Now I'm going to stagger the blocks here but when you're done the top of this wall should be in line with the bottom of the stone floor here. What this is going to allow you to do is grab your stone arch and place it along the length of your stone wall. Do the same along the line of the stone floor and then we can remove our log beams and poles and you can repeat this process as many times as you need to until you have a dock that is the size that you require. To finish this off I'm going to go across the top with the stone floor and then at the end we'll have a stone stair just to make it a little bit easier to get on and off your boat. Now that we've finished the foundation we can start to work on the walls so you're going to grab the black marble 2 by one and at the front of the structure in this corner here. Now we can follow this all the way around the structure but at the front of the structure we're just going to angle it and place it back into the plinth that we had earlier. So just keep following this line all the way around the structure and when you get to this back section instead of coming along and following the line here you're just going to cut it in ever so slightly and then start again. So you're going to have this small section of black marble floor exposed and then you'll just continue on your way as before moving around the structure and we'll do the exact same at the opposite side here. Since this section at the dock is going to be an entrance, we don't need to place a wall here. Once you've done the first layer, you can work on the interior walls. So we're going to have rooms on either side, which are going to be five long and six deep, which means that the interior walls are going to be just here. And as you can see, this creates a room which is five deep and six long. We'll have the same thing on the opposite side. And at this stage, we can identify where we want our windows to be. So with the cage wall, I'm going to come to the back end of the structure here. 
We'll fill in three along the back, one just in this corner here, and then with the cage wall one by one, we can fill in these gaps on either side. In the room on the left hand side, we're going to have a window on the back wall, so we're going to create a small indent with the black marble two by one here and here, and then this is going to show us directly where we want this window to be. We can place in the cage wall two by two. We'll do the same on the back right, although the window is going to be much smaller this time and we're going to use the cage wall one by ones and then on the right hand side room at the front of the structure we'll do the exact same as we did for the opposite corner. So now all that's left to do is build these exterior walls four high and since we've already done the hard work for the windows it should be really obvious where we need to put the walls and we'll just move them across the top of the windows like so. So when you're done your exterior walls should look like this. For the interior walls we already marked out their position earlier. So we'll start off with the black marble cornice and we'll position these into either the main room or one of the side rooms. At either side of this, we can build up the wall four high, similar to the exterior wall, and we can build across the top of the cornice like this. Once we're done with both sides, we'll add on a one by one on the top corners here. And what this is gonna allow us to do is lock in the black marble cornice on the opposite side, and then we can place in a hearth along the top like this. I also like to add in a middle support for the hearth just because it looks a little bit more realistic. We can place in a cage wall 2x2 two two on either side of the hearth and make sure that you keep this cage wall in line with the bottom of the hearth. Then with the black marble 2x1s two we'll continue to build it up and then we'll start to move across the hearth to the opposite side leaving a 4x1 rectangle open for the smoke to come out. We can test this out now by adding some wood. And as you can see we now have this nice fire display inside our house. We'll finish this off by building two cage wall 2x2s on either side here. A cage wall 1x1 one one in between and then on the side closest to the middle of the build we'll add in another layer of cage wall 1x1 one one along the top. And once you've done this on both sides you should have a structure which looks like this. At this stage we can start to work on the roof so grab the wood wall half and basically just go around the inner side of the black marble wall that we placed earlier and make sure that you have a one by one at the front of the structure like this and then from here on out you could just follow all the way around the structure using the wood wall halves. At the back of the structure you can just fill in this space here with the black marble 2 by one and then continue as normal all the way along and around the build back to the start. Once you've gone around the structure with the half walls grab the shingle roof 26 degrees and we'll go around the outside of the structure again. So obviously it's going to be the shingle roof 26 degree on the flat sections. And then if you have any interior corners like this, we'll have an I corner. And then any of the exterior corners, we'll have an O corner. This is what the first layer of the roof looks like. And you should have this overhang at the front here with the single wood wall one by one. Here we're going to grab the wood wall 26 degree, snap it into place with the wood beam 26 degree. We'll follow this up and back down the other side. Pop one of the crosses on the top and this marks the outline of our second layer. So with the second layer we'll come all the way along until the end of the structure here and rather than come back into the structure we'll grab the wood wall 26, we'll come two up, one down, do that on either side and we'll have the wood walls along the bottom and to finish off the profile of this roof we'll have the wood beam 26 degrees running up the top and a cross up the top like this. Once you've got that in place it should make placing the rest of the roof for this room really easy. We're going to take the roof along until we hit the cage wall and build it all the way up on both sides like this. So now you should have two layers that run all the way around the structure and then on the side rooms we're going to have this 26 degree shingle roof going all the way up and meeting on either side. And after the third layer with the 45 degree we're going to get to the stage where it hits the cage wall. We're going to fill these in with the wood wall 45 degree and then we'll place another one on either side of the cage wall like this. So using the roof icon of 45 degree, we'll place it into the bottom corner of the wood wall we just placed. And you should be left with the start of the last peak of the roof. With the 45 degree, we can work all the way along. I'm going to leave two blocks in the middle so I can put a bit of detailing on the roof. But when you're done, it should look like this. For this middle section, I'm going to use the wood beam 45 meters and just basically trim off the sides. Then we'll have a wood pole one meter on the top of each side. And then I'm going to use another wood beam one meter and basically just make a scaffolding for the shingle roof ridge 26 degree. And then we can take that wood beam out and place one over the left side. From here, we can just trim off all the other loose edges and then we'll place another jingle roof 26 degree on each side. From here we can add in a bit of detail, so that's going to be the wood beam 2 meter running along the top of the roof, and then the cage wall 1 by 1 running along the top of that. 
I'm also adding in a wood beam 26 meter and a 26 degree cross. And at these chimneys, I'm going to grab the dark wood pole 4 meters and come up like this and along the top like this. And then we'll just finish this off by placing the cage wall along the top. If you want to, you can follow these lines down made by the wood wall 45 degrees. If you want to place in any windows on the side rooms, take out six blocks like this, and then we'll place a 26 degree roof ridge on the top. Connect this with eye corners to the sides. We'll have a 26 degree inverted, and then the 26 degree roof like this. Finish it off with a roof ridge 26 degree. Once you've got this shape, you can either leave it like this or add in a bit of detail. I'm going to add in some detail with the wood beam 26 degree. The wood pole 1 meters will have a 26 degree cross on the top, or a 5 degree cross on either side. And I think this still looks a little bit bland, so what I'm going to do is grab the wood beam 1 meter, create a little lock point halfway into this roof ridge, and then with the old corner 26 degree, I'll snap onto that point. And then now you've got this sort of little overhang above the window, which I think makes it look a little bit more natural. You can put one of these in each corner if you want, but just to finish this side, I'm going to place in a wood beam 2 meter along the top of the roof. And then similarly to what we did across the top of the main roof, we'll place in a cage wall one by one along the top. The same trick that we used for the windows can be applied at the side of the structure. And if you want, you can even take this a bit further and bring it down with the shingle roof to the side like this. Once you're finished with the roof and you've added in any windows and detailing you want, I've added in this trim along the outside and a couple of windows at the back. It's time to get on to the chimney. So I'm actually going to get rid of these 2x1s and place in a black marble floor instead. And then I'm going to build up too high with the 2x1s and place two black marble floors along the top. And this is going to be my chimney. If you want to add in any more detail, you can add in a sort of similar style roof to this on top. But I kind of like it like this, it's a little bit weird and out there but it works just fine as a chimney. The last thing I'm going to do to the exterior of the structure is just add in these pillars around the outside, try and make them symmetrical around the build. What this is going to allow us to do is add in a couple of areas where we can place up some banded shields and some general decorations around the outside. If you add them in just at the corners, it just creates these little cells that we can place in some decorations. And also just try and keep it symmetrical around the windows. The last thing we need to do is use the dark wood beam on the dock. You get all the way along and down the stairs with the 26 degree. And use the cage wall one by ones just to place in a little safety barrier along the side so you don't fall off when you don't need to. At the end we'll need to use a 2x2. Two two. Once you're done it's time to get started inside. So place down a hearth in the slot that we left earlier. And I'm going to light this just to get a little bit of light going. We're going to grab the black marble floor and we're going to place it so that they almost overlap and we can place it one by one in the back. We'll do this on each corner next to the hearth and placing the fermenter on top of that. Here we're going to take out these three sections of the wall and replace them with black marble one by one and that's going to allow us to place in a stone oven in this little slot here. Once you've done this on both sides it's going to look like this and now I'm going to fill in the space around the hearth. So I'll do this with the iron cooking station. I'll place it just at the back but still close enough I can reach it and then we'll have the cauldron here. We'll place the pots and pans on the right hand side, the herbs and spices on the left hand side. We can place the butcher's table next to the oven and then we'll have the mortar and pestle just at the side, maybe around here. In this corner next to the bedroom I'm going to place in a golder table but you could place in any calf station that you want. In the opposite corner I'm going to have a black forge with the black forge cooler just underneath. On the opposite side of the wall we'll have the forge, so I'm going to place it so that the leg is just in line with the tiles there. And then I'll have the forge bellows on the left hand side. And we can create some shelves with the wood wall one by ones just above here. And what this will allow us to do is place in some of the upgrades which we couldn't fit in otherwise. So like the anvils and the grinding wheel here. We'll have the forge cooler just down at the side. And then with the smith's anvil we can place this next to the black forge and it still kind of looks in place with them both being forges. That means the workbench can go on this side and again we're going to make use of the wood floor one by one to just fit in some of these upgrades. So the tannin rack for example can go up top here. For the chopping block I'm going to place down a shelf on the opposite side of the wall, place it up top. You can place the adds on the left and then we'll have the tool shelf which should just be able to fit in on the back wall there. In the middle of the window I'm going to place down another two cage walls. This is going to be a space for the cart just to place in here and then I'm going to show you how to do the first layer of a storage wall. So I'm using the wood floor one by one going all the way along here and then placing down 
the black metal chest along the bottom. Now you don't have to use black metal chests, you can use reinforced chests, I just think that black metal chests are a little bit better. But if you wanted to rotate them around so that they were this way, you could probably fit in three reinforced chests in the space you can fit in two black metal chests. So if you want to be more efficient, use that method. But I've just left enough space for forward facing chests here. Again, you're just going to follow along, placing down the black metal chest. And when you're done, you should end up with something like this. Obviously, I've added in some decoration along the top and a couple of torches and lights. Moving through the structure, I've also added in a long heavy table and a couple of benches with a throne on either side. And I've grabbed some iron torches and just placed them through the table like this in each of the corners. This brings us into the bedroom and the first thing I'm going to do is take out some space in this wall so that I can place in an arch that takes me out into an outdoor space. A 4 meters worth of space here and then I'll create an arch using the cornices that we used earlier. This looks like a good space to me and I'm going to start off with, after that I'm going to start off with where we're going to place the bed. So I'm going to place the bed directly in the middle of the room. I'm going to line it up with the tiles on the back like this and then I'm going to add in just a little frame around the outside using the black marble one by ones and then this black marble arch. So that's going to have it looking like this. I'll place a light on the top and also on either corner. We place in a couple of locks, rugs next to the window and this is going to get our comfort up. And then we'll have a stone throne in the middle of the window like this. We'll have the round table for the additional comfort and although it's not required for comfort I think it looks much better with a couple of dark wood chairs just spread randomly around the table like this. I'm going to place down a couple of lights because I feel like it's a little bit dark in here. I'll place down the duke carpet in the corner with the maple and yule tree. If you're not using the dev commands, then don't worry about this section. Obviously, these are the two bonus seasonal items that you can build in summer and winter, and these will allow you to get some additional comfort whilst they're active in your home. I'm gonna have a hot tub in this corner. I'm gonna use shift for this and just drag it out ever so slightly like so. And remember, you won't get any bonus from the hot tub unless it's actually lit. We will need to add a couple of banners in, and the only other item that we're missing right now is the armor stand. So we'll place it here and we can place the shield on it just to make it look a little bit cooler. We move it into the garden area. First thing we need to do is add in some stairs. We we'll have the black marble stairs and then we'll have the black marble floor at 45 degree and we'll just make sure that we're pinning it in that this corner matches this corner here. We we'll come out two blocks on either side and then we'll make use of the black marble stairs like this and just fill in this extra space. At this point grab your round pole fence and basically just make yourself a garden as big as you want. Once you've done that you can add in a little bit more decoration, put in a sitting log and a campfire. So we're almost done now but the last thing we need to do is just decorate the outside of the build how we want to. I'm going to use some Deverga wall lanterns and then we can place down a couple of wood poles, we we'll place a vertical item stand in the middle and I'm going to place a banded shield on that, place in some red banners on these columns. I'm going to do this all the way around the build. So if you made it this far, you now know how to build this advanced longhouse. If you liked the video, please do leave it a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you can't be bothered building this for yourself, members of my channel can now get access to my world files and this will be included within that. As always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.